Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating this very simple web header bar uh, in Photoshop that you can go ahead and take and bring into Dreamweaver or Flash or wherever you are building a site or an application or a gallery or whatever it may be uh, and you can use it. So really this is going to try to be a, a pretty basic tutorial. I'm going to try to make it pretty quick. Uh, you know how I am about making stuff quick. Most of my tutorials are not very quick, but we're going to try to make it quick. So let's jump right into it. This is what we're creating. Uh, so you're just going to start file, new. You can start with a perfectly blank document, 640 pixels wide, 40 pixels high with a white background. Hit OK. And the first thing you want to do is double click your background and just give it a name. I'm going to name mine BG. The only reason I'm saying do this is because once you unlock your background, you can then shut it off and have a transparent background. We are going to have a rounded edge. So if you want to preserve that transparency out onto the web, you're just going to want to save this file out as a PNG file. All right, I'm going to leave it on, however, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here. And I'm going to call this layer rounded shape. And on this layer, I'm going to uh, create a rounded shape, but I'm going to use my shape tools here and grab the rounded rectangle tool. I'm clicking and holding, grab rounded rectangle, set the radius to 10 pixels. That's very important. The other very, very important thing is that you use the third icon over from the left. We have these three icons. The first one is going to be you know, create a shape layer. The second one is creating a path. The third one, right before you get to the pen icons, is creating a, a fill shape. Very, very important. I'm going to zoom way in over here on uh, this corner. Whoop. Set that to 10 pixels up there. And uh, I'm going to grab my zoom tool and I'm going to zoom way in on this corner here. And what we want to do is draw a shape here on this corner that it has these 10 pixel rounded corners. However, we want it to be a, uh, a specific color. So I'm going to select my foreground color here and we're going to go 304 uh, DC9. That is our the code you want to punch in. That's the, the number for the color. So hit OK. And now what I want to do is hold down my Shift key and just draw out a rounded rectangle. Now, I'm not all the way up in the corner the way I'd like to be, so I'm going to hold down my spacebar key now and just move my shape until it's right where I want it to be. And then line it up with all three sides and let go. Voila, we have a nice blue shape on our rounded shape layer. The next step is going to be creating a new layer. So come down here to your layers panel and select that little new layer icon. And we're going to name this layer. And by the way, I'm naming by just double clicking on the layer. I'm naming it tab. Now that we've done that, we're going to go edit, fill. And we're just going to choose here under contents, use black. It's going to fill our layer with black, just solid black. Great, that's exactly what we want. What we want to do now is just reduce the fill of this layer to 0%. So here in your uh, layers panel, you have fill and then a percentage. Select that and just type in 0. Great. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and go layer, layer style, gradient overlay. Before I continue though, the fill opacity simply controls the fill of your layer, not everything on the layer. For instance, when you draw something on your layer, like we just drew all that black, all that goes uh, or all that is controlled by fill opacity, but when we go in here and apply a layer style, the layer style is going to act like it can see what's going on. So if I were to add a stroke, we would see the stroke here, even though there would technically be no fill because the fill opacity is zero. So we're going to go ahead and apply a gradient overlay, and you're going to see the gradient overlay is going to show up. Great. Now just select that gradient strip, and it's going to open up the gradient editor. Double click on the handle or the color stop down here at the bottom left. It's going to open up the color picker. Again, we're just going to punch in a number, that, well, a, a hexadecimal number, uh, D7, D7, D7. It's sort of a pretty light gray. Hit OK. And then over here on the white color stop, hit that, and we're going to punch in E9, E9, E9. It's an even lighter gray. Hit OK. And hit OK again for the gradient editor. And you can see we have a nice gradient happening back there. Great. So now that we've done that, I'm going to zoom out and just show you what we've got. Nice gray bar. I'm going to zoom back in, however, because now it's, is where it's going to get tricky, especially if you've never used the pen tool before. But bear with me. We're going to try to, to, to work through this and really get this figured out. Select the pen tool. And again, the pen tool has those options that we were working with before, those same three options or three icons up there on the control bar. We want to choose the one in the center just to draw a path. So what I want to do is basically imagine there's a line coming out of this bottom left corner. I want to start way down here. So I'm going to click once. And, well, you want to click and hold and pull straight to the right. You can even hold down the shift button to make sure your tangent handles are making a straight line. Great. Now that you're doing that, imagine drawing a line right out of that point you just drew, the one in the center, straight up to about here. 
Again, click and hold and pull to the left. What you're gonna get is this nice S curve. All right, now just click up here above and, uh, and we're just gonna pull our line back around until it connects again. There we go, great. Now that we've done that, we wanna move this path over a little bit. So I'm going to grab my path selection tool. Note the hotkey is the letter A. You want the black arrow. If you're not getting the black arrow, just click and hold on the path selection tool and switch from the direct to the path selection tool. Select the path and just hold down the shift key and use your arrow keys to just nudge it right over until it kind of lines up with that corner nicely. I'm actually gonna grab my direct selection tool and I'm gonna select this anchor point right here. I'm gonna kind of pull it down and over a little bit. So there's a little bit more of an exaggerated uh, S curve happening there. All right, great. Now that we've done that, we want to uh, go ahead and convert this path to a selection. So go window, paths. It's gonna open up your paths panel and uh, right click on the path and just choose make selection and hit okay. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go back to the layers panel. We're still on that tab layer. You wanna go layer, layer mask, re or hide selection, excuse me, we'll choose hide selection. All right, great. So we now have that mask, our little rounded rectangle is kind of tucking out of the corner uh, and it looks great. The next step is going to be adding a little drop shadow here. Now you may think normally of a drop shadow as something that drops down below and casts a shadow in front or behind an object, which typically is the case. But in this case, we're going to use it to just almost make this little rounded rectangle look like it has a gradient applied to it itself. So what we want to do, we're still here on the tab layer. We're going to go layer, layer style, drop shadow. Right here. All we want to do is make sure you have deselected use global light Reduce the opacity to 30%, set the angle to negative 40, set the distance to 8 pixels, and set the size to 15 pixels. You can see it's going to give us a nice little uh, gradation of color right there. Hit OK, and voila, we've done that. Next up, we need to create a new layer. Select the new layer icon, and we're going to name this layer Highlight. And I'm going to zoom out. And we want to grab the rectangular marquee tool here, and we just want to draw a, sh a selection out that essentially cuts the document in half. You can see it kind of splits it in half right, right across the middle there. And we just want to fill it with our foreground color. So, bam, just filled it with my foreground color. And uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and go layer, layer style, blending options. Now, here in the blending options, I'm going to set the fill opacity to 0%. Makes all that blue go right away. Beautiful. Next, we're going to choose Gradient Overlay. And this looks great so far. All we need to do is change the gradient. So select that gradient bar. And here, we're going to use a preset gradient. Well, I thought we were going to use a preset gradient. Hit Cancel and then hit OK. We want to make sure our foreground color is set to white. So I'm going to hit D, which is going to reset my colors to black and white. And then I'm going to hit X to flip my foreground and background color. My foreground color is now white. Double click on that gradient overlay in our layers panel, the one here for the top layer, this guy right here. Double click on that. It's gonna open up the layer style dialog box, select the gradient bar, and there we go. Foreground to transparency, so second gradient in. And you can see we get this cool looking uh, sort of highlight effect. We're gonna change the blend mode to overlay and maybe just reduce the opacity a bit all the way down to about 15, maybe a little lower than 15. There we go, I like that a lot. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now really the last thing we want to do here with this uh, document is just add a little bit of text and almost make the text looks like, look like it's been cut into maybe like a metal bar or something. So I'm going to grab my text tool and again your text can be any color because we're actually going to color it blue using a color overlay. Uh, I've got a font face here or a typeface and I'm just going to select here and I'm going to type the word words live shows exclamation point. Make sure you put a space in there. A space where a space is supposed to be. Hold down control and hit enter. There'll be command return on the Mac. It's just going to commit your type changes. Grab your move tool right up here. Hot key is V. Drag that uh, live shows text right over there into place. All right, great. Now that we've done that, we're going to go layer, layer style, color overlay, just so initially we can see our text. Uh, and we're going to change the color again to whatever that color was we used initially. I believe it was 304 DC9. That would be correct. Hit OK. And you can see our text is now blue. Now we're going to add a very subtle inner shadow. As soon as we add that, because the text is thin, all the text basically turns black. So number one thing we need to do is reduce the distance to one and reduce the size to maybe one, maybe two. Let's stick with one. 
uh, one, there we go. And we also want to reduce the opacity to something like 40. Great. You can also throw a little white stroke around it, uh, reduce the size to one, set the color to white, and uh, reduce the opacity way down to something around 20. All right, hit OK. And now here's the important part. Right click on this type layer, and well, let me drag my layers panel out here so you can see what's going on. Right click on this type layer and choose copy layer style. This is gonna be very important because we also wanna draw a couple little icons over here to the far right. But we're gonna do that using the custom shape tool provided to us by Photoshop. Right down here in the shape tools area, custom shape tool. And we can just choose a shape. I think I'm gonna start off with this heart. I'm just going, well, we need to create a new layer. We cancel, I just, that happened because I tried to draw here on my type layer. Create a new layer and you can name it whatever. I'm gonna name it icons. And then just draw your shape out. Hold the shift key to constrain proportions and drop the heart shape, great. And let's go ahead and grab uh, maybe this radioactive symbol and drag that out right next to it. Drop it right in place. All right, great. Now that we've done that, simply right click on the icons layer and choose paste layer style. And you can see it gets that same cut in look that we have on our text. And that's it. That's a very, very simple uh, web header bar. At this point, you could save this image uh, and you could take it and use it in your website. You might want to leave the text off altogether and just apply text you know, through your HTML editor. It would certainly make it a lot easier to edit. Uh, but that is a very, very simple uh, web header bar here in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.